I hope you win. That was from last show. I didn't say that at the end, which is like what my sign off and I didn't say it. So, hey, Mike, what are we doing? We are back this week with show number nine, top five Wookiee ride receiver rankings, and we are going to go over their landing spots as well, Biggs. That's what's going to happen on today's show. Your mom is going to go over their landing spots. Ooh, Nelly. No, Nelly. My number one wide receiver is Malik Neighbors, and I feel like he's going to the Los Angeles Chargers. My number two wide receiver is Marvin Harrison Jr., and I also feel like he is going to the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, I don't think that they're both going to the Los Angeles Chargers. I just think that um, the Los Angeles Chargers, if they're going to draft somebody in the top ten, it's going to be one of those two. Lad McConkey is my wide receiver three. I like him to Atlanta. Jamari Thrash is my number four. I like him to Jacksonville. And Malachi Corley is my number five, and I like him going to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers, Corley. Let's talk about um, why you got neighbors ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr. real quick, because I think that that's a spicy take, and uh, a lot of people are moving that direction. So tell me why. Malik Neighbors is my spotlight. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I should have known that. Uh, Malik Neighbors Neighbors is my spotlight. Your spotlight. (laughs) We're off. (laughs) Producer's drunk. (laughs) (laughs) All right, my... My wide receiver rookie spotlight is LSU wide receiver Malik Neighbors. Here's why. Let's talk about his draft profile real quick. Number one, he's 21 years old. That's young. Or he will be when he plays through the season. Uh, he's an early declare. That's that's pretty important. Um, he's a, a sophomore breakout. He had over 1,000 yards as a sophomore for an SEC team. As a true sophomore, not a redshirt sophomore, it was legit his sophomore season. He had a 42-inch vertical at his pro day. Vert is a very, very sticky correlation statistic for wide receiver success in the NFL. Uh, he's That's 98th percentile, that, that 42-inch vert. Uh, he benches above average, you know... <laughs> Uh, bench press is, is pretty important. He ran a four three five forty. That's scooting. Uh, and scootin'. while forty is not quite as important, uh, people love it, and it helps with draft capital, not necessarily performance on the field. Four three five is is pretty good. Uh, let's talk about some statistics. Uh, he ran fifty four percent of his routes out of the slot and forty six percent from outside in twenty twenty three. That's pretty good. Um, he's not locked in or limited as a slot receiver. Uh, he can play on the outside. That's important in the NFL. He averaged 4.35 yards per route from the inside. That's astronomical. And 2.84 as an outside receiver. So you can see the difference. He's getting a good five yards depth when he makes the catch as a slot receiver, uh, averages 2.84, almost three yards as an outside receiver. But that 2.84 yards was still ranked in the top 20 in the country. That's how astronomical that 4.35 yards from the slot is, because when you take everything into consideration and it's about that that 2.84 yards per route from the outside is about half of what he was getting from the slot, that's still a top 20 wide receiver. All right. Market share, target share, uh, dominator rating, that all that goes into it. He had 31.1% of his team's receptions. And remember, he was on a team with Brian Thomas Jr. Thomas. 
35.6% of the receiving yards. So he took more receptions than anybody else, but also had a higher share of yards. 31.8% of the receiving scores. He's a big play machine. Uh, he averaged 17.6 yards per catch, and he led college football in plays of 20-plus yards and 30-plus yards. He had 41 play, uh, Sorry. He had 34 plays over 20, and 17 of those were for 30 or more. He was one of 23 wide receivers in the country to earn a 99.9 .9 pro football <laughs> focus grade on targets of 20-plus yards down the field. So, working out of the slot, he can catch uh, middle of the field. He can. He's going to be a, a good friend of the quarterback in short yardage, and also he's a monster downfield. So, you... Not that Seattle is going to be taking a wide receiver or anything. They're pretty set. But if you put him on a, with a quarterback that has a deep ball like Geno Smith, deep accuracy like Geno Smith, he will absolutely feast. Justin Herbert, just saying. Uh, now, the nitty-gritty. This is the meat and potatoes of why he's my number one. There's a collection of metrics. And when I aggregated those metrics and broke it down – giving points to specific uh, production stats. Marvin Harris Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. was number six in that aggregation. Malik Nambers was number one by himself, far ahead of everybody else. He was second in the country in first downs per route run. He was fourth in yards per route run against man coverage. He was second in in yards per route run against zone coverage. That's where slot play is important. He was third in yards after catch per reception. He gets the ball and he breaks it. And he was first in the country in missed tackles forced per reception. You can't bring him down. He'll mm -hmm. juke you out of your shoes. He'll break the tackle and scoot away. The man is going to be an unstoppable force in the NFL. My number one. I like that take because I also have Malik Neighbors as my number one wide receiver. And I know it's bold. And you know what? Sometimes it takes a bold prediction to, to really hit in these kind of situations. But, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr., there's nothing to slouch about him about at all. Like, I mean, he's got a profile. He's going to get a probably a really juicy landing spot as well. So for me... I'm going to just quickly go over uh, my top, uh, you know, five wide receivers. And Who are uh, they, Mike? Number one is Malik Neighbors, and I think he's going to slip down the board, and I think he's going to go to the Giants. You're smart. I also think that uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the number two, and I think he's going to get a landing spot of the Arizona Cardinals. I think they are going to stick at number four, and they're going to stay there, and they're going to pick Marvin Harrison. You must not have watched our show last week um, or the last show that we did, episode eight, because I explained that the Arizona Cardinals are trading that pick to the Raiders. Mm, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, my next guy is Roma Dunze, and I think he's going to be landing in a Bears uniform and solidify that triple threat with Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, and now Roma Dunze, Caleb Williams. And Cole is gonna, Komet. Oh, yeah, Cole Komet. He's going to feast next year. And my number four is Alad McConkie. And that's a little bit bold, uh, but I love Lad McConkie. And I have him going to my Chiefs kingdom. No, please. Oh, no. yeah, buddy. No, yeah, that would and be it's awesome. a chiefdom. It's not a kingdom. There's no it's kings. A it's a chiefdom. All right. And then I've got Troy Franklin as my number five wide receiver. And I have him going to the Buffalo Bills. I think they're moving up to get Troy Franklin, the versatile wide receiver that is a route running technician. So I'm going to spotlight this guy. No, 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 no. My, my guy, lad, my guy, lad in the Chiefs, uniform many people are flag planting Ma uh mcconkey as this year's puka nakua not sure how that could be compared to puka because you know 
Ladd McConkie is going to get probably second round, if not first round draft capital. But I can see the comparison as far as the way they, they play the game and their physicality. He comes with the same type of swag and people are drafting him as so. I've seen McConkie go in the first round in rookie drafts and some people think he will garner, garner first round draft capital in the NFL. I'm hoping he does and I'm hoping he's getting at the right end of the uh, of the first round to my Chiefs. McConkie is fast. He's no. a burner off the, off the line. He is. And he is dangerous after the catch. He is good in the intermediate routes. McConkie is also an incredible separator. He won't win much downfield or those contested catches battles but he is a great slot receiver and he will slide in right away on a team especially if he gets first round draft capital McConkie is way faster uh than guys like edelman and welker the guys he's been you know being compared to he ran a sub four four at the combine which was surprising to the most people McConkie is being crowned as the early best route runner in this class, and I have him moved up to my wide receiver four, like I mentioned, only behind neighbors, Marvin Harrison and Adunze. He probably won't move up any further, even with the most juicy landing spot being my Chiefs, but his uh, running abilities have got to put him in the same tier as Worthy, Franklin, and Brian Thomas at minimum. McConkie's yards per route run was an impressive 2.54, fifth in this class. His yards per route run 3.65 in 2023 was only second behind Malik Neighbors at 3.81. This is a metrics I put a lot of stock into when I evaluate these rookie prospects. And another interesting, uh, you know, one that we're seeing a lot more come up is, is the First down per yard per route run, and McConkie is a leader in that one as well. He he was only behind uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors in that. So that's meaning he's being targeted heavily when the teams needed him the most when they need to convert a first down. So another cool stat, McConkie led the wide receiver group with the highest quarterback rating when targeted at 136.3, meaning he is the quarterback's best friend. A smart player who can create after the catch and stretch the field to attack on all three levels. Like I mentioned earlier, he won't win downfield like in those contested catches, but his football IQ and his route running prowess will garner him late first round, early second round draft capital. I love Lad McConkie. He's my wide receiver for I'm flag planting him now as a guy that I'm heavily invested in him in rookie drafts in 2024, but next year in redraft as well. So, uh, Lad McConkie, my guy. I think it's interesting that um, Lad McConkie is your spotlight, and yet you have him lower than I do. You're too low on him. You're too low on McConkie. You heard it here first. Wide receiver four, too low on McConkie. So, Biggs, another great show what we got next week on our show our next pod boom so if you remember episode eight what we did um we uh, did our our top five at the quarterback position and then we each spotlighted a player if you remember that and then if you remember the show that we just did episode nine we did that but with wide receivers um think of that but with running backs same bye i hope you win hey where can we find us oh sorry uh like subscribe share um uh, you know, uh, comment, hit the bell, uh, follow us on Twitter. I'm at big bone at FFB. He's at FF Canuck 99. Yeah. Okay. And bye. find us on the fantasy football advice network, always where you can find the fantasy forecast every week, every day, you'll see something new from us. So we'll see you next time. I hope and you win. Hope you win.